Hello everyone, this is Katherine Toon, and I've got some great stuff today. You know, recently I'd sent out a survey, kind of getting a sense of kind of what people were hungry to hear and things like that. So I've just been sitting with it and letting the Lord bring up uh, what he, what is on his heart um, for his kids. And so you've been on his heart, yay, what a shocker, right? That's awesome. So today we're gonna talk about unruly thoughts, um, thoughts exalting themselves against the knowledge of God. Okay, and this came really as I was kind of meditating on like, you know, what do you want to talk about today, Jesus? Um, you know, there was someone who had uh, wrote in on the survey that, you know what, I really want you to minister on the power of thoughts. And, it, and they said, this is so um, transparent, like this is, where is this not us, right? And he or she, I wasn't remembering if it's a he or she, I thought it was a he, but I could be wrong. I seem to have a struggle at times with allowing my thinking to overpower what I know, right? Now, what an honest struggle, right? How many of you have problems with sometimes you're thinking overpowering what you know? And you know, that is why, hello, we are in a fight of faith. This is a fight of faith. Faith is believing all the good stuff that Jesus did for us as us, as it is finished, and we get it by inheritance as sons and daughters. And in every place where, wow, it looks like, you know, the enemy is just, um, you know, overwhelming everything. It looks so hopeless, or it just looks hard, or the giants look big and fierce, and you know, and you look small, and somehow Jesus, like, where are you? Or you look kind of puny, or whatever that is. That is what the fight of faith is all about. So that's just a really honest fight. And let me just say this, I don't think we ever graduate from that. Because when you master it in an area, well, wow, usually there is another area that you're gonna be letting let, let into that, wow, you're gonna have a bigger fight of faith. You're gonna have more that's exalting itself against the knowledge of God. And that's not to like, oh God, to exhaust you. Um, that's just the nature of the game. And let me tell you, God made you a champion. So this is why as we are gazing at him as in a mirror that we are being conformed, transformed into the image of God from glory to glory. So there's always another level of glory. Let me just tell you, whatever glory you're at, it is requiring faith to operate at that successfully. And you know what? as you are um, um, exalted, as you are um, promoted into another level of glory, wow, guess what? There'll be another level of faith. So this is a really honest question and it's not abnormal. Like if you feel like you're the only believer that struggles with this, oh my goodness, let me help you. <laughs> This is me, this is everybody, but so this is why we need to get reminded. We need to be reminded regularly of what we know, and hence, this is why the disciplines in the Christian life are actually really good, but the disciplines are not to earn brownie points with God. Like, I read six chapters in my Bible today, so I'm a good Christian today. Oh wow, I didn't feel like it, so, and I woke up late, and I didn't read anything, and now I'm a bad Christian. And if you're on that roller coaster, oh my God, just get it, give it up and get off. That is not what the Christian life is about, right? Um, the Christian life is about being transformed into the image of God, getting to know God, getting to know who you are, what he really did on that cross, cross, allowing that to be worked out through you so you can expand the kingdom, right? Doing the exploits with your name on them, right? Um, it's all about love. It's all about operating from the person of love. And, and let's just be very clear, your faith, which is what this fight is all about, does work by love. So getting settled in that person of love, who God is, who you are, um, and understanding that, wow, stuff is being worked at in you, that you are being stretched. And you know, and then, then on top of that, add to the fact that there is an enemy that roams about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Wow, he is actively looking to, um, to pound on the places where lies have been instilled in your heart um, so that the lies feel truer than the truth. Okay, and that is why we, we need to be engaging with God. That's why the disciplines actually really do help, not, not because we're earning brownie points with God or we need to do this to be a good little Christian. No, we do it because honestly, we need it. We tend to be forgetful. 
It's part of the weakness of our frame. Um, and so we need to be reminded. And so putting ourselves in a place where we're actually getting fed. Now, let me just say this and help you with that. Um, what you may have fed you last season, maybe you were that, wow, I read five chapters a day and this is awesome and I can't wake up and wait to wake up and dive into that or whatever. And now it's like, wow, that's like eating sawdust. Well, God is wanting to minister to you a different way. Okay, there's nothing wrong with you uh, unless you've gotten so filled by the things of this world that you kind of, your appetite has been kind of quenched with uh, food that does not really, um, really provide the nutrition you need in your spirit. And so, um, so it may be another way of connecting with God. But whatever that is, whatever that discipline is that has life on it, you don't beat yourself into a frenzy uh, doing that. No, you do it because you need it. It's for your benefit. It's like uh, the Sabbath was made for man. Man was not made for the Sabbath. So if you say are a Sunday Sabbath person and you um, didn't go to church today, you're not an evil uh, believer. No, the Sabbath may look like something different. The Sabbath is actually what you're, you've entered into in order to um, in order to rest in that finished work of the cross. So I'm not going to get off on a tangent. So let's go back to the power of thoughts. Okay. So let's let's go let's get some scripture. Yay! What a good idea. So we're going to go to Proverbs twenty three seven, and it says, um, "For as a man thinketh in his heart, thinks in his heart, so is he." Um, this whole concept of wow, whatever is going on in your inner world, okay, that is going to manifest on the outside. And you know, whatever you surround yourself with is going to have an impact on that thought, thought life and you will manifest it on the outside. This is why it's so important uh, to be very careful with who is in your core inner circle. You know, the, the, the five people that are closest to you are gonna determine where you're going to be in your mind sets and, and the efficacy of what is going on in your life to manifest the kingdom, in your business, in your ministry, with your relationships, in your finances, in your health, you name it, they're going to have an impact. And so, you know, the Word of God says, do not be deceived. Um, evil corruptions, uh, uh, corrupt good manners, morals and characters. Well, this is not, you know, typically as we say, well, you know what, if they're out shooting drugs and whatever, you may not want to hang out with them. Well, you know what, if that's an assignment for you, do that. Okay, awesome. But they, they do not need to be your core people because they will impact you. And don't be deceived because we're all impacted. We are, are all influenced by those influences and so we want to be careful who's in our core circle because if they're not if they're not bringing you up and challenging you to a higher level they're going to be pulling you down and in a more and maybe it's just a more mediocre level but we were never meant to be mediocre okay all right so there's that uh, romans 12 2 says be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you may prove what is the good and, and, and perfect will of God, right? And that perfect will of God for you. So that whole transformation, right? Do not be conformed to this world. Uh, the, the word world is the actual word, world age. And it was actually talking about the old covenant age, the, the, the place where you are performing to earn rather than Jesus having performed and you entering in that through faith, uh, by grace, right? All of that. And um, so you're conforming to that mind pattern, but be trans transformed by the renewing of your mind. So what are we renewing our mind to? Hi, Haram. Um, we are renewing our mind to who God is, to who we are, and to um, what he did on that cross for us. And that is the whole kit and caboodle and getting that in a place where honestly it becomes our default program. Because let's be very clear, whatever's happening on in your subconscious that is not in line with what the word of God says, whatever is happening there, okay, that is having an impact is going to bear fruit. If that is not in line with the word of God, guess what kind of fruit you're going to bear? Uh, not God fruit not um, uh, <clears throat> life more abundantly to the full till it overflows. So we need to be very uh, conscious about what we're thinking about and what we're allowing to f ourselves to feed on. So in this place, um, Proverbs 21, 22 has, a, has a, some good stuff to minister to us. It says, one who is wise can go up against the city of the mighty and pull down the strongholds in which they trust. Okay, so let's unpack this. So um, what he was wise, that would be us. That would be us in the place of where we're, we're engaging with that spirit of wisdom and revelation, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of love, that we may know what is the hope of his calling, the glories of the riches that have been placed inside us and his mighty power toward us. Hi, um, 
Um, so in that place where we're going up as, as the wise, okay, he is our wisdom, okay, against the city of the mighty. So what is that referred to, the city of the mighty? Well, let me just tell you, there are places, there are strongholds that the enemy has set up. Now these may not, you know, they're not necessarily a city on a map, but they're on a city on a map in our minds, right? Uh, we can go up against the city that might and pull down the stronghold in which they trust. Well, that stronghold uh, in which the enemy resides in is the stronghold of lies, right? So what particular lies that maybe they're, you know, um, healing doesn't work, like, you know, um, boy, if you get cancer, you're going to die. Or, you know what, God doesn't really provide for all of his kids. Or God provides for everyone but me. Or, um, you know, whatever that, I'm, I'm shameful because of what someone did to me. And that shame is because of me, not because of the shameful thing that was done. You know, whatever that is, that God is distant, that God doesn't hear me, that God is scary, that God is demanding. Yeah, I know what it says at that, you know, that everything receiving is by grace through faith. But you know what? I, I, I feel like I still need to perform. Like I really, if I don't read my Bible, if I don't go out and evangelize, if I don't do this checklist, somehow God is dissatisfied with me. That is a stronghold. That is an evil stronghold. And a wise person will go up against those strongholds in their minds. Understand a stronghold is nothing but a pattern. Uh, but, sorry, but a program and a pattern, all right? Um, it's a program in your mind. It's a program in your conscious and oftentimes your subconscious. And that program, when it's a program that's anything else but what God says in the rightly interpreted word of God, uh, revealed word of God, that uh, that is a stronghold. That is an enemy stronghold. And sometimes the strongholds feel a whole lot more true than what God says, Okay. Um, so with that, we're going to skip on over to 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6. You guys probably know this. This is I'm reading this from the Amplified Classic because I love the way this particular version uh, amplifies it. It says, for the weapons of our warfare, so we're, what are we warring? We're warring against strongholds. We're, the, we're warring against the mighty that have been set up strongholds, right? Are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. Okay, yes. But they are mighty before God. I love this because you're there you are before God. He's overseeing this thing. He's like, and he's rooting for you. He's going, yeah, you know, this is, yes, this is me. Or mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. So what does that happen? Well, in that place where there's an overthrow and a destruction of a stronghold, literally it's like that whole system is turned on its head and then it's pulverized. Okay, so let's talk about that, um, the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. I want to make sure that I have the right one. Yeah, so that is the word. Um, hold on. I got a couple words here. I want to make sure I'm giving the right one for the right deal. Yes. And so this is called a pulling down of strongholds. Pulling down, that word is, uh, I'm sure I'm butchering this, but catharesis. Um, it's the word, it's a feminine noun, which is kind of interesting. Uh, you might want to think of like a mama bear. Don't mess with her cubs, right? She's got that thing's going down, right? Um, so uh, it says demolition, um, let's see, uh, extinction, destruction, pulling down, like a castle stronghold fo fortress. Anything on which, which relies in terms of arguments and reasonings by which one endeavors to fortify their opinions and defend it against their opponents. Okay, so that is the whole concept of pulling down, pulling down and overthrowing. Like this is a whole system of lies. If you believe that you have to perform to earn God's love, okay, if you have to do that in order to earn his favor, right? There's a lot of religious mess that we get taught. Hi, Peter. Um, that we, we learn that, wow, in order to earn God's favor, we're going to have to do something. And the truth is you earn God's favor because because you're in Christ and Jesus already has his favor. And as that son and daughter of God, you have the favor of God. And as you're growing in the revelation of that, I'm like, wow, I have, oh, Jesus, like a favor encompassed me about, about like, a feet, uh, like, a, like a shield, okay? All of that. So where you have all that, you're able to say, you know what? When I'm pulling down this thing, whatever this thing that is coming against me to exalt itself against the knowledge of God, I have favor in pulling that down in overturning it and in destroying it. I have the ability to do that. I have the ability to see what the stronghold is. I have the ability to mount up and say, gird myself up and uh, uh, put on my uh, warrior. This is a warring term, right? And like pulverize it. 
pulverize it, everything that's exalting itself against the knowledge of God. So let's go on. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now let's talk about that because I don't want to get all religious on us. I don't want us to get all freaked out. Um, in the Amplified Version, it says um, that we have, have mighty uh, that we are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds in as much as we refute, refute. That means go against, it's like, no, mm -mm, I'm not buying that. I, I'm, I, I'm renouncing that. Arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself against the knowledge of God. Now, let me just say this. Um, think of the, the language of the enemy. You know, the enemy, let me just be very clear. He's been doing this a long time. He knows, honestly, where the wounds are, that he's inserted lies that have gone into our subconscious so that the lies, oh my goodness, feel true. Like how many times have you been like, wow, I'm standing on the word for a healing or for finances to manifest or for, you know, a, a son or daughter to come to Christ or all that kind of thing. And so that you have these subconscious things. Hi, Henry. If you have any subconscious things, and I'm telling you, they are sounding true. Like that lie, I know what the word of God says, but it really feels true. Like when I pray, nothing happens. I'm going to pray for this person. They're going to die of cancer. We're going to, you know what I mean? And, and that feels true. And so this is where we've got to get, Ooh, we got to put on our big girl, big boy panties on, right? We need to refute those arguments and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing. This is the language of the enemy. He comes in with arguments. Wow. That sounds so right. And theories that, whoa, wow, feels so right. And reasoning is going to take you through. This is why you don't, let me tell you, don't tango with the enemy. Like if the enemy is talking to you, do not engage. What you do if the enemy's, and you know, it's, I, I don't know how many people come to me and say, well, the enemy's been saying this and it's just tormenting me. I'm like, since when are you getting into a conversation with the enemy? You don't converse, you cast down, okay? You, you, you command that thing to back off. You don't converse, he's gonna mess you up, okay? He would mess me up. So we just don't engage. I don't care if I'm fresh from doing some sort of sin and the enemy's like really wailing on me about the sin, okay? And he's right. Okay, I'm not, he does not get an opinion. I, I'm, I'm taking that to Jesus, right? Me and Jesus, gonna, Jesus is going to help me. The enemy is going to mess me up. He's going to condemn me. He's going to, right? He's going to try to take advantage of that and make a big deal. So wherever the enemy is beating you up with something or taking you down this thing or causing you to question things, or just, oh my God, do not engage. Like you do not have to do that. Just because he's talking doesn't mean you have to listen. La, 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 I can't hear you. I'm talking to Jesus, so you need to shut up in Jesus' name. Just some wisdom right there. So that's refuting arguments and theories and reasonings. And every proud and lofty thing, it's going to look big. It's going to look bigger than God. It's going to look lofty. That's the point. That is a setting, setting itself against the true knowledge of God. Maybe he's going to say, wow, you know, God is really displeased with you. God is really unhappy with you. God is just so disappointed with you. God is like, oh, my God is so mad that you did that thing, that porn you did last night or whatever. He is so mad at you. You're a bad Christian, whatever that is. Well, that, why are you engaging? Okay, go to, go to God. Go to God with it. He's, he knows <laughs> and he loves you and get the real take while he's trying to set up a case against God that's going to undermine you. He's trying to set up a case that, you know what, God's promises don't work to undermine you. He's trying to set up a case against you to try to separate you from God. And if he can separate you from God, he can take you out. You know, there have been people just recently in the body of Christ, close friends of mine, who literally have been totally sideswiped, have spun out of control, and they're amazing people. And you know what? Something happened where maybe they forgot to do this, right? Maybe they got into some sort of agreement. And it says being in readiness to punish or subordinate, subordinate for his disobedience when your own submission and obedience as a church is fully secured and complete. Now, this verse always used to bug me because it sounded very punishy. <laughs> like, right? So, like, I did something wrong, so I got to punish myself to make it right. I got to punish my thoughts. What are you punishing? No, what's your doing is you're saying enemy look 
This is your making. Okay, now I fell for it and I was foolish, but I'm not going to be fall for it to be foolish anymore. And as a matter of fact, I am going to camp out in this place of God's truth and his love for me and his approval of me and his forgiveness for me and my righteousness that he's given me that I didn't do squat to earn and, and his, his favor that I have and all these provisions that he's provided and the healing he's provided and everything that he's provided. That is my birthright. I'm going to camp out there. And then, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those thoughts. I'm going to make them obedient to Christ. You are punishing the enemy because it's his disobedience that caused that thought to rise up in the first place. Let's be very clear. Anywhere where you have been hurt, whether you've been, that things have been stolen or is killed in your life or destroyed in your life, that is the handiwork of the enemy. And with that, he inserts lies about hopelessness, about helplessness, about powerlessness, about how you deserved it or about how bad you are, about how God's, whatever, he's going to put that in there. Why? Because he's constantly after separation. Anything that he can do to separate you from the knowledge of God. Remember, grace and peace are multiplied over and over and over through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. So in that place where we have in, incorrect knowledge, where it's all about the law, it's all about what I need to do, it's all about what I did wrong, it's all about like God is wrathful and he's really mad. Man, he's, he's coming back and he's packing it because he's really ticked off at the human race. All of that faulty representation <clears throat> of a God is set to, uh, set up to undermine you and cause separation or let I or even sometimes in the charismatic realm I've got to get to another level I've got to do something maybe I need to fast and pray so I can get more in Christ than I was before baby you are so in Christ your problem and my problem you know is that we just need to remember maybe we need to be awakened for the first time but we are in Christ we don't fall out of Christ because we sin we just forgot who we are and did something that was counter to our born-again nature okay that's what we did, but there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Um, clean up your mess, forgive yourself, and baby, move on because you are in Christ and you're not falling out of Christ. That is how you're taking those thoughts captive and you're making them obedient. You say, thoughts, listen, enemy, you are not renting space in my mind. You do not have permission to rent sp space in my mind. And so, of course, he's going to try to get you to question things. He's going to try to question, get you to question the goodness of God or your worthiness of it or all this kind of mess when it was never about that. Okay, that is why Jesus said it was finished. It is finished. It is finished because he did finish it. And so our job, should we choose to accept it, is to waken up, uh, awaken up to that, be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And from that place, as we're renewing those minds and meditating on and engaging with the word because it's alive and it's powerful and it's active, it's a person, engaging with that, we are literally being transformed from glory to glory to glory. We are, we are being transformed into the place where, honestly, we're able to release the love of God, the grace of God, the truth of God in a way that heals, delivers, sets free, in the way that sozos, that saves people. And we're constantly in the process of getting sozoed, of getting saved. Why? Because there's areas in our minds that are just jacked up and not thinking like God, right? And so, and there's no condemnation in that, but there's a whole lot of mess in that. This is why we're going to have to take those thoughts captive. And you know, that does require, that is a um, an element of, um, of some violence. Like, you know, who the kingdom of heaven suffers violent and the violent take it by by force okay let me tell you there is a time to war i'm not this big warfare person i am not but baby listen if the enemy comes across my path he, he's going to have to go down because if it's between you and me and what jesus said listen what's at stake is what jesus said Okay, that's what's at stake, and no, it's not allowed in Jesus' name, right? Otherwise, I'm pretty much happy at rest and carefree, um, but just don't mess with me. And I'm not talking about you. <laughs> I'm talking about the enemy, okay? So um, let's talk about that word, because I said I, I talked about um, this concept of this really militant, it's a militant term. Hi, Ventress. Um, and we're talking about casting down. Okay, so that's casting down every wicked imagination, everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, every proud and lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, leading every thought captive. So what is this casting down word? It's the word, and I know I'm butchering it again, so just, I love me anyway. Um, kathoreo, okay, um, that's the Greek word kathoreo, and it says to take down, destroy, put down, pull down, cast down, um, to pull down, demolish. It's likened to undermining a fortress. Let me tell you, every lie 
that comes into your life is like this fortress that's being set around you if you allow it to remain. And so he just builds brick after brick after brick after brick after brick, and suddenly you're in this stronghold, and the, guess who's in the stronghold with you? Yeah, it's the enemy who's kicking your butt and eating your lunch, okay? Who's tormenting you. And this is why we're demolishing that. You're taking it down brick by brick by brick by brick. You're taking that down. Now, let me just say this. God also has strongholds. He is a tower. He's a stronghold, and the righteous rush, uh, run into it. So in the place where, wow, we've got these strongholds of righteousness, strongholds of, wow, God is loving you so good. I can't, I can't help but, uh, but, but uh, win for, uh, for losing. I can't lose for winning. Okay, that's what I'm going to say. Um, you know, these strongholds that say, of course I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm delivered. I'm righteous. I'm powerful. Right? Nothing formed against me shall prosper. All those things, those are righteous strongholds. Strongholds. Oh man, who that is the place where you go to and retreat when you need to retreat, right? So to pull down, uh, demolish the subtle reasoning of opponents, like into a fortress, to refute, to destroy. Okay, um, let's see. There's there's another meaning I thought was awesome. I guess that was it. Okay, that was it. <laughs> Yay. Um, so what I'm saying is there is a time to be militant. Okay, this is not this is not your identity, but this is something you take on when you need to. And this is something you take on in your mind, because let me tell you, your thoughts are gonna make you or your thoughts are gonna destroy you. And you get to decide. You take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Why? Because this is not a God thought. I don't need to go there. And literally in the places where I've had massive strongholds in my life, strongholds of shame or condemnation or whatever, um, and literally, and the enemy used to just beat me up and beat me up and beat me up and beat me up and beat me up for years, and I got them honestly. You know, others people sin against you that you take on yourself. That wasn't my fault, but I took it on myself, right? Abuse tends to do that, right? And so, you know, I learned, and then I finally learned to get rebellious against the enemy me. Isn't that awesome? There is a place to get rebellious and you need to rebel against the enemy. You need to rebel against the stupid things he's putting in your thoughts. You need to rebel against condemnation. You need to rebel against anything that's calling you less than, than what God is saying you are. You need to rebel against all that. Maybe you need to rebel against pride. Maybe you need to rebel against false humility. Maybe, I don't know what it is you need to rebel against, but whatever that thing is, you take that thing. No, I don't have to go. And I'd literally have to say, because I could literally see these demonic entities and they're saying, get in that place, get in that place of condemnation. I mean, it was really evil, wicked thing. And I'm like, oh, I don't have to do that. I, I finally realized I didn't have to do that. That was not my place. That was not my identity. That was not who I was. That was not what Jesus was saying about me. I was going to retreat back and sink into that, into God, take on the new man to sink into that new man, which after him is created in true righteousness and holiness. And I'm going to sink into him like a robe. And that's what you're saying about me. You're saying that I'm powerful. You're saying that I'm righteous. You're saying that I'm holy. You're saying that there's no condemnation. You're saying that I'm brilliant because I have your mind. You're saying, wow, that I can do all things through you who gives me strength. And you're there backing me up, giving me strength. That man that I'm rooted and grounded in that place of love, the length, breadth, depth, and height of it, that I know the love of Christ that passes mere understanding. So I'm filled, wow, bam, with the fullness of God. That you are filled, you are packing that fullness of him. And so in that place, wow, well, as you're meditating, you see a lot of times it's not just a matter of ca casting down, it's a matter of replacing. If you are focusing on God, if you are magnifying God, there's not a whole lot of room left for some stupid thing that the enemy wants to put in your mind. And that's why hanging out with people that are going to call you up into the greatness of who you are, are going to link arms with you, do that. Um, reading your Bible, yes, that's a great idea. Memorizing to all that stuff is a good scripture as long as, as it has life on it. It's not a punitive thing. It's not a have to thing. It's like, wow, I need this for me because, man, I need to build up my spirit, man. You know, praying in tongues, if you have your prayer language, might I suggest if you don't have it, go ahead and just ask the Lord for that. It'll be something sweet between you and him, but that will edify and build up your inner man, right? So if you're so, so busy focusing on the things of God, you really don't mess with the devil that much. Isn't that awesome? I used to be a daily battle for me to wrangle with the enemy, but I'm saying I only just happens to pass my cross uh, path. That's what it happens. But you know what? I'm so focusing on God and that intimacy and that relationship with him that literally that just becomes, it just doesn't happen very often. It's awesome. It is awesome. And I didn't know that I could do that until I started experiencing it for myself as my default. And that can be your default too, because you can take those thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ, anything that's not God, uh, and start to really 
experience the fullness and the goodness of God. Yay. Amen. <laughs> so um, as always, I'd like to attach a, um, a free resource for you, or at least a re resource. And I included my uh, Rare and Beautiful Treasures for mini book. I actually published it and put it on Amazon, but you can get it for free <laughs> and download it. It's called Rare and Beautiful Treasures. It's all about keys to move from brokenness to beauty, right? And, and all these places where our minds are, are broken and our thoughts are broken and our belief system are broken and we have strongholds of the enemy versus strongholds of God those are areas of brokenness and you can replace that and move into a place of beauty a place of power a place where God is manifested uh, even honestly without you trying hard yay so anyway you can download that so when I share this there'll be a link that you can link to and cl click on that and download that to your account I always upload all my videos if they're a reasonable length um, and pertinent onto my website katherinetune.com so feel free to go there and there's more resources there um, I love I love to give it just makes me happy so I hope that blesses you and I hope you have an amazing day bye bye